Welcome to another episode of Arbitration Life. I am Janet Brin. And I'm Hannah Jamal. Istanbul Arbitration Week is happening from October 10th to the 14th, and we are so excited to be a supporting organization for the second year. Hannah, you will be traveling to Turkey for this exciting event. Yes, indeed, Jeanette, I am very excited. It will be my first time in Istanbul. I'll be speaking on the 13th of October um, during a panel discussion on arbitral institutions trade trends sorry, for innovation and efficiency in international arbitration. The panel will be chaired by Bivia IC, uh, arbit- uh, Bivia IC, sorry, Arbitration Committee member, uh, Professor Emilia Oniema, and will be joined uh, by our colleagues from EDAC, ISTAC, the SCC, and VIAC. Our guest on today's episode is a member of the organizing committee of the Istanbul Arbitration Week. She has an outstanding reputation in litigation funding, where she originates, underwrites, and monitors funding in various litigation sectors, including international and commercial arbitration, insolvency, class actions, and global litigation matters. She is the global head of origination at Benchwark Advisors, and is based in London. Prior to joining Benchwalk Advisors in 2018, she worked as a technical manager in Arthur Gallagher's dispute resolution team, uh, working with international law firms and litigation funders around the world to deliver funding and insurance solutions. She was awarded the Turkish National State Scholarship to study Turkish law at Bashkent University. She studied English law at Nottingham Law School, and she holds a master's degree in international relations and is a charter insurer. Our guest today was instrumental in the drafting of rules on third-party funding for both Institute and Exit. She is recognized as a thought leader, third-party funding by Who's Who's Legal for two years, uh, for two consecutive years, and she is also ranked at Chambers and Partners and Low Dragon as a leading funder. Please welcome Aisha Yazir. Welcome to Arbitration Life, Aisha. How are you? It's so good to see you. I'm fine. I'm fine, Hannah. I'm fine, Janet. How about you, ladies? Absolutely great. Such yeah. a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> lovely to meet you too. And lovely to see you again, Hannah. Yeah, likewise. So you're in London at the moment, right? Yes, I'm in London. I'm in London. I decided to take a break from traveling a bit. Okay. <laughs> Understandably, big event coming up. Yes, uh, it's a week. Exactly, exactly. So all the attention is there right now. Okay. But we'll definitely ask you about that uh, in one of the questions. Uh, but I guess we we'll, should get started. We shall get started. Yeah, definitely. Aisha, um, what inspired your career choice? And did you choose arbitration or did arbitration choose you? Janet, arbitration chose me because I am from Turkey, Ankara. And if I would have said to my dad, I want to do litigation funding, he would have disowned me. Like, what are we talking about? And we need to think about over 30 years ago. And when I came to the UK as well, I wanted to be a diplomat. Then I didn't like it because I find it very vague. I moved to law. And from that, I moved to insurance. But initially, Janet, what I was doing is it, I was doing in so many cases. And I was doing quite a lot of litigation cases. The first time when I worked for a broker, they said, I should be have an exit case. And I said, where is the exit? Which exit? So I was looking around. And they said, there is no exit. It's exit case. I said, what is the exit case? Where is the case exiting? And they said, calm down. It is the ISDS cases. And I'm like, ah. Oh. So initially, the first time, Janet, to answer your thing short, it chose me. And that was the first time around four years ago I came across with exit and arbitration. Nice. So <laughs> funny. Oh my gosh. Real story. This is a great story. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Exit case. So funny. Um, so Aisha, what would you say you enjoy the most about working in international arbitration? And what would you say is fascinating uh, about it? Yeah. Oh, Hannah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Because I have never seen any part of law, which I do quite a lot of class action, competition cases, insolvency matters all around the world. That's how you can be a litigation funder. You do a bit of everything. But the reason why arbitration is my favorite is it is the only area of law where history, politics, and law just merges together and creates something new. 
And I find the lawyers who are doing arbitration quite interesting. They all have interesting backgrounds. They can speak more than one language. And then you watch the news and whatever happens in politics, it affects what you are doing. There might be war starting. So what happens is the cases against that country stops, new cases come. There might be regime changes, economical impacts. Everything affects arbitration. And when I do, I think about funding an arbitration case, I learn so much about the history and politics between states and individuals. I just love it. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're a member of the Istanbul, did I say that right? Yeah. Arbitration yes. Week. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on my, my Turkish and stuff. Huh. Um, so you're a member of the committee. Um, can you tell us about your role and the next conference and what will be taking place on 10 to the 14th of October of 2022? Yes, Janet. Janet, you will be missing out, but Hannah will be having lots of fun in Istanbul. So we are, <laughs> we are organizing something really fun, interesting, and educational. My role, I am one of eight people in the board. And we all do a bit of everything. So it was me who came with ISTA name okay. because the initial one was Turkey Arbitration Week. And I said to my committee, guys, look, Paris Arbitration Week, London Dispute Week. So when you think about, or Tel Aviv Arbitration Week, when you think about all these events, you need to figure, figure out the main city that you want to introduce to the world. So ISTA started like that. We decided to get a logo, Janet, which is two bridges because Istanbul is the only city in the world that East and West meets together. So you are in okay. Europe, you can see Asia, it is wonderful. So we put the bridge there. And yeah, and it just started like that. And we just thought it would be great to bring everyone to one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It's historic capital for three big empires, Roman Empire, Byzantine Empire, Ottoman Empire. But at the same time, there is so much potential in Turkey, Janet. If you meet Turkish new generation and the generations who are there, and Hannah, you know Elif and some other people as well, they are incredibly bright. They speak more than one language, very open-minded people. And today I was talking to a um, American lawyer for lunch, and he said, isn't it very weird that wherever I go, in Turkey, there are more women in the power of top law firms or construction companies than any other country. And we have, I think, kind of misunderstanding around the world. I want to bring everyone and show them uh, what Istanbul is and introduce the world to Istanbul. Sounds very exciting. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah. with the plan, 10 to 14, I was keeping it to last. I don't, I, I don't want you to be a heart broken, but you can come next year, Janet. Okay. So 10 <laughs> will start with a big uh, party in one of the Ottoman palaces. And it has historic reference as well, because on that Ottoman palace, one of the reasons why Ottoman Empire get into war is the ships from Germany went into Russia and they start bombarding and everyone saw on that palace what was happening. So it's a very beautiful old Ottoman palace. And then we have three days of conferences, lots of different areas, lots of people coming all around the world. We are expecting over 300 people who will attend. Um, we have arbitrary woman breakfast. We have a boat tour. The boat will come in front of the palace. We'll have 100 people for three hours, just taking around the boats for us, bringing everyone back. And the last day, we closed a museum, which is one of the historic museums overlooking Istanbul again. And we are going to have our closing party there. Absolutely wonderful. I, I love that you're not only having an opportunity to learn more about arbitration, but you're actually having an opportunity to learn about the country and its history. Yes. Yeah, exactly. so that's just great. Great, great. I'm so much looking forward to coming to Istanbul. That will be my first time. So very, very uh, excited. You are going to love it, Hannah. We can even go clothes shopping. It's so <laughs> cheap in Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> very much looking forward to it. So now, Aisha, you've been instrumental in the drafting of rules on third-party funding for both in and exit. Uh, yeah. Exit? Exit? Exit. Which exit? Which exit? <laughs> How important is the role of third party funding in arbitration at the moment? And do you see it getting more and more important in the future? How do you think it's going to develop? I mean, Hannah, that's a very good question because when I first started doing funding, which is like quite a while ago, I'm not going to give so you can figure out my age. 
So I, the only cases we look into were normal litigation cases in the in the UK. Now I am getting probably two or three arbitration applications a week here, and it is quite substantial amount. So we are seeing more and more cases, but the clients that we are seeing it, not you know the Exxon Mobiles or the Shells, we start to see quite a lot of cases with the people who doesn't have any money. So we always say David and Galaya, the companies lost everything. They want a Swiss state or a company because of a fault of another company is bringing commercial arbitration case. I think litigation funding is here. It will get more and more used. And there are some rules now by exit and LC trial. Uh, it's not affecting us at all uh, because it's talking about disclosure. We are all in for it. It's talking about conflicts. It should be checked. It's very important. They are talking about security for costs. We just go to Lloyds of London A-rated, get an A-rated insurance. So it doesn't affect us, but we will be using litigation funding more in arbitration, I think. Absolutely. And we have the same in our roles. We also have disclosure of third party funding in the BVIIC roles. Yes. Uh, I remember we spoke about this one day, but we did. yes, yeah. we did. No, that's true. I have I think it is important. And it actually for me. Sorry, I became quite nerdy because when people say litigation funding, I find it very difficult to stop myself. But when you think about um, how important litigation funding is bringing the case and also settling the case, because if you're a defendant and there's a litigation funded behind the case, that means that the case must have good merits, right? Because we review the case, we take the full risk of losing everything. So it kind of strengthens the client's case when it comes forward. Absolutely. No, it's it's very important and uh, uh, it, it's good to see more and more conferences. We had one uh, last year uh, during uh, BVI Arbitration Week. We obviously, during our event on energy disputes in Paris, Arbitration spoke about this when you were uh, a yes. speaker, uh, our yes. event yeah, with ADAC. Uh, so yeah, it's, ve it's very exciting to see how it's going to develop. Yeah. And, and also, I think in the Caribbean, in our region, okay. uh, uh, I guess we'll see more of those cases. I know. And we would love to fund that. I told you, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> so, Aisha, um, how would you say your role as third-party funder complements your role as an arbitrator? That's a very, very good question. I think what we see as a litigation funder, we see the both sides. We see the good lawyers, bad lawyers, and how the decisions have been given. So if you are working in a claimant law firm, only just one side, and you can't see the defendant's side, I think we're a bit limited, but my role in working in funding, dealing with the matters, reviewing the cases, analyzing, and coming to a conclusion goes very well with the role of an arbitrator. Because as an arbitrator, you need to listen both sides' stories and come to a conclusion. And that kind of, I think that kind of thinking gave me an edge to kind of fill out the most important points of a case, think about them, and decide something. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And now, Aisha, uh, what would you say uh, are the difficulties that you have experienced in your career? Oh, <laughs> I might need to write a novel about this. I, <laughs> I find it very difficult to find a job to start with because I came from Turkey, very, very, Janet, very unusual background to quite a lot of people who are applying for a role here. I had no legal experience from any jurisdiction. So I was applying for training contracts and they were saying, well, you need a work experience. Then I was applying for work experience. They were saying, we can't give you any work experience because you don't have work experience. So <laughs> it was it turned into a chicken and egg. And mm. I, I had quite a few friends who finished university even lower grades than I did. They got the training contract interviews. Um, but for me, it was a really big hassle. And I had to sit there and think, how am I going to achieve that? What will make me different? And it wasn't just 10 applications. I had to do probably 70, 80 training contract applications to get only 10 interviews and finally get one place. So I find it incredibly difficult to get a place when I first started. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, well, you certainly, certainly overcame that. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, I remember we spoke about this with one uh, in, in one of our last interviews of how getting started. It's so difficult mm. and yeah. how many applications you have to do or internships. And and it's, it's funny because me, it was exactly the same. I remember sending for my first associate position 
80 uh, CVs and cover letters. Yeah, 80 exactly. applications, yeah. 80. Hana, exactly. And the thing is, I had to be creative. So no one was giving me a job, you know, internship or anything. So I find the immigration law firm in London. And I, I said to them, I will do anything. And they were paying me 40 pounds a, a week, 40 pounds a week. And I was sitting there doing indifferent leave to remain applications day in, day out to get the experience. I think the, one of the most important things for young, young people to have seen, you need to get whatever there is in front of you to get into a place. Uh, you did eight applications on it. And now you have lots of juniors coming to office and they say, oh, we did 10 applications, such a shame. I said, what is 10 applications? You need to do hundreds now. <laughs> yeah, and then you just get the right one because you only yes. need one. Right, exactly. right. So Aisha, can you can you share with us an experience that has been most impactful in your career? Well, Janet, I think moving here was the thing that really changed my life. Um, I was at Burford for seven years. I worked at Gallagher's for a year and a half. And I was being reached out by other litigation funders because I was working with every litigation funder globally. I am also a chartered insurer. I know how Lloyds work and I can create insurance products. Um, then I got a really good job offer, really good salary. It was amazing sign up bonus. Then Adrian Shop and Rizar managing director reached out to me and he said, I just set up something new. Would you like to come and join us? And they were offering me the half of the salary, the other place offered. No sign up bonus, but everything I had was just coming to something new and be a part of it. And it was really important for me to be a risk taker because it was a huge risk. If the company was going down, I was going down with the company. But I think it again showed me it's how important to take risk and sometimes grab an opportunity when it comes. Because if I would have said no to this company and work, to work with another litigation funder, I don't think I would be that well known. I don't think I would, my, you know, my experience would have gone quite substantially high because we are only 10 people and I work with two decision makers and I learn quite a lot from them. How do they think? And you can work in different parts of the business and it is easier to prove yourself to the world because there are not 160 people in front of you. That is great. Well, wow, yeah. So taking the risk. Hmm. Taking the risk. So That's the tip I give to everyone. Take a risk because there's always one opportunity in front of you. And yeah. if you miss that opportunity, that's it. Yeah. So that's a great advice. And to follow up on that, what advice would you give to your younger self? And what advice do you have for students and long year, long year lawyers sorry, uh, who want to work in arbitration? Um, my younger self, I don't know how you felt, Anna, when you did eight applications, were you feeling very dubious about your strengths and did you felt like there's something wrong with me? Mm, I don't think I necessarily thought that. I remember just in Paris at the time, it's very competitive, still very, even more maybe competitive, but it was, I just applied to all the law firms that said that did arbitration. So boutiques, big firms, uh, I was trained at the time at A&O, but I knew like they didn't have a job in arbitration. Yeah. So uh, I just thought, yeah, I had the experience that was necessary, but I knew it was competitive and there were a lot of people yeah. applying at the same time. So it's yeah. a bit you and your luck. Uh, I mean, you are better than me because I started to think, what I would say to my younger self is, I became very really dubious about my you know, knowledge and strength. And I started to question myself. I said, is there something wrong with me? Why no one wants me? Why everyone is saying no to me? Why I'm not getting any interviews? And that just came to me that I started questioning myself and it, it affected my confidence. So when I went to an interview, I was shaking, thinking, oh my God, it's a big privilege to be here. How did I manage to do that? I'm actually not good enough. Um, I probably, if I go back and speak to my younger self, I will say be more resilient. I think the most important thing in life is resilience. Lots of people give up, quit. They say, okay, that's it. There's something wrong with me. But power comes to play when you became more resilient. And then you start to understand what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, and you learn from your mistakes. So I would have said to my younger self, be more resilient, look what you did wrong, and how you are going to change yourself. I think those are very important points that you should always keep in your mind. 
certainly agree with that. Yeah. Great, great advice. Uh, and another advice to make it in arbitration. I mean, oh, that's yeah. part of it, taking grace, yeah. being resilient. Yes, be resilient. And also, um, I will say, you know, sometimes people think, oh, success just comes. No, you need to work really hard for it. And when I see from newer generation, I will sound so old, but oh, well, never mind. <laughs> but they, quite a few to, new students wants everything to happen. It's like, this should happen. They should work in a job. Don't be too entitled. In my job, I am doing, in Turkey, say, mashallah, well, um, because I am working incredibly hard. For instance, I went to New York. I attended every single day, six to seven meetings. I took 5 a.m. train to Washington. I had six meetings, took 6 p.m. train back to New York, and I had seven meetings again. You need to work incredibly hard. I need to diversify yourself. If you want to be an arbitra arbitration lawyer, you need to learn languages. You need to do extracurricular activities. You need to make yourself visible. And you need to try to find a way. This job will not going to come to you. You need to put yourself out there to get it. Very true. Very true. Thank you so much, Aisha. No worries, ladies. <laughs> so, Aisha, I would love to know. My favorite question of this whole interview uh, what is your theme song that gets you going? Especially as you're thinking about getting ready for Vogue and everything like that. Really? <laughs> what is my your theme, theme song? song? <laughs> you need to explain Vogue because this is the conversation we had before we started recording. Yes, so, I know. I mean, so Istanbul Arbitration Week, Vogue is coming to record us. Like, how cool is that? Where can you find it? Vogue going to be there. And we are going to have Bloomberg, you know, all these news agents. Uh, but team song these days definitely woke because I play and I'm like, oh, it's so amazing. Woke is coming. But before that, uh, let's think, Janet, let's have a quick thing. Um, I, what I used to listen before interviews and sometimes, uh, I know this will sound so bad, uh, but I will say it anyway. So <laughs> do you ladies like a song called Winner Takes It All? Winner Takes It All? Yes. I'm not sure if I know that song. Winner Who sings takes it? it all. Da, na, 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 na. No. Winner takes it all. Loser has to fall. It's simple and it's plain. This is how, this is why I don't complain. So this is the lyrics of the song. And it just gives me, um, if I am getting a competition or something, and Hannah, you will love it. I did humorous speech contest in the UK. It, I became UK and Island champion. And I was constantly listening to this song. Yes. Really? <laughs> Yes, Ooh, I wow. yes. Yeah, okay, definitely want to hear this song. Yeah, we got to look this yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is, it is about like winning something. And it just, I don't know, gives me the power when I listen. Or I, I of the Tiger. I love I of the Tiger. Oh, yes. That's, that's a classic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a great one. If there's a good case, like for instance, I get a good case from Hannah. And Hannah says there are other litigation founders. I will be probably listening and sending her terms. Well, yeah. well, thank you so much. This has indeed been a very enjoyable interview, very fun, very insightful. And I thank uh, you so much for that. Thank you, so uh, thank much. you ladies. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for having me. Nice to see you. And I look forward to seeing you soon in Istanbul. Yeah, I'll see you in Istanbul, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aisha, for joining us on Arbitration Life. And for more Arbitration Life, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and to follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter at Arbitration Life.